Now, uh, not content with tossing some of their statues into the harbour, the city of Bristol is thinking about other ways of writing slavery out of its history. Now, the university is considering changing the name of seven buildings named after the family of Henry Overton Wills III, who donated the money to found the institution back in the early 20th century. But the university authorities say that much of his fortune originally came from tobacco plantations worked by slaves. Now, Ashley, is this going to make Bristol a safer, happier place to live? Uh, no, but it will make some people um, feel very good about themselves and the whole industry that's associated with these sorts of things, this whole trauma industry, I'm um, very happy. You know, there's this, uh, it's, th there's this idea that this is all about making good on the past. You know, it's, it's about reparations and reconciliation. And what it does is it transforms present problems into problems that are all just rooted in the past. And all we have to do is come together and heal. And guess what? I can help you with that. For just nineteen ninety nine. you can buy my book or you can, your institution can buy my training package and get all of your naughty employees to get rid of their white, supremacy, <laughs> white supremacist ideas. Um, and it's just this huge racket. That's, that's, that's all that this, that this is. Um, and I, what really irks me is that this is really big in Canada, where I'm from. Um, I'm Ojibwe, I'm Indigenous Canadian, obviously mixed with white. <laughs> um, and this is huge. It's just this photo op for Justin Trudeau to sort of say, oh, all the problems that Indigenous people have, they're all in the past, and that was the bad old state. The good old, the good state now is very sorry for everything. And really, all the problems that you have, they're because you're traumatized. And what you need is not, I don't know, drinking water, <laughs> like a lot of reservations don't have drinking water, good jobs, now you don't need that. What you need is therapy therapeutic healing because you're so damaged. And actually, it's inc incredibly racist because they claim that we're all psychologically damaged and that's the reason why we have problems. And is it any surprise that they're taking away huge numbers of children, uh, indigenous children, which was supposed to be the bat, the thing that the bad old state was doing. So they, what this does, it makes people feel good about themselves, it provides a photo op, but it constructs indigenous people, black people, uh, um, ethnic minorities as victims, victims of the past, um, and ever it shall be. Yeah, it, it, I think perhaps it's got something to do with this therapy generation. Everyone needs therapy for something. And when you go back into therapy, you go back into the past and find out that the reason you are the way you are is because of what happened to you in the past. Look, I'm fine. And as with regard to all this slavery nonsense, I mean, we are enslaved anyway. Look, we've got mobile phones, the clothes that we're wearing, everything, <laughs> probably things mined by slaves, brought to us by slaves. Why aren't these people looking ahead of what they're actually doing now? Why are they so concerned with the past, Michael? Yeah, I find stuff like this incredibly puerile, juvenile, crass, virtue signalling. I mean, if they are serious, of course, they should presumably donate all the money back that helped found these institutions, if they're really actually serious about it. Oh, no, no, let's just change the names instead. <laughs> what a statement. How brave. You know, I just find it very, very, um, well, just very pathetic, really. And I think, actually... Constantly, it's uh, uh, negativity is what surrounds these debates. Why not celebrate the fact the leading role this country played in f ending the slave trade? The Royal Navy mm -hmm. out there fighting the, sna the, the slave trade, playing a crucial role in doing that. It just seems to me that our institutions, and I'm sorry to say many of our universities now, seem to be pretty unpatriotic. They seem to exist within a sort of far-left... Um, sort of thought bubble, group bubble, where they're not actually in touch with the country at large. And, and this echo chamber is pretty concerning, considering these are supposed to be the institutions uh, empowering students with critical thinking, which, of course, is to look at the good, at the bad, at different arguments and make their own judgments. And, of course, when you look at any country's history mm. and heritage, there are things to be proud of. There are things, of course, that we regret. This is history, and it's about learning and, 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 and uh, moving forward very in selective. a positive way. <clears throat> They're very selective about the bits that they learn. I mean, uh, this Henry Wells guy, he, he, he was, he was uh, born five years after slavery, uh, before slavery was abolished so he wasn't even really he didn't have much to do it's more to do with his family it's the family but actually you work at, within a university mm -hmm. is this woke culture there where you are is this nonsense going on and are these students going we must remove all links to slavery whilst holding their mobile phones and tapping <laughs> into their laptops is that what's happening um interestingly no my students um tend to be really open-minded um and I, um, I try to teach you know 
all sides. I do teach this sort of thing because they do need to know about it. They need to understand what's happening in sort of culture wars. And I try my best to give many different sides of these debates so that they can make up their own minds. And they are very receptive to it. I find that it's management <laughs> that, seem, that is very on board with these things. And they claim students are demanding this. And it was really funny because someone came to me. I probably shouldn't say this, but someone came to me and they said, it's very important that we decolonize curriculum. <laughs> and I was like, I just want to like point out the hilarity of this situation right now. You, like a British lady, are telling me, an indigenous person from Canada, I need to decolonize. For who? For my own good? Sorry, I can decide for myself what I need to teach.